Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are again doing cryptography. Um, today we'll be doing the baby step giant step algorithm. So let's just jump right into what exactly the baby step giant step algorithm is. It's pretty simple and what it solves is equations that look like this or congruences. So something that looks in the form of a to the x which is congruent to some g mod p. So I think the best way to um, demonstrate this is to actually just jump straight into a problem instead of going through every single step. So let me pull up the example really quick. We have 2 to the x is congruent to 7 mod 53. And we want to solve for x. So solve for x. So to do this, we have a couple of steps. Um, our first step is to set, oops, I mean set our m equal to the least integer of, set m to the least integer of the square root of 53, which is our p value, and we get 8. So what do we do with this 8? This 8 represents how many steps we will use to get, um, to how many steps we will use in our next two steps. So for our second step, we want to solve for a value a to the mj for each step. And from our first step, from step one, we found out that we have eight steps. So we'll name j our index, and we'll go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and that will be eight individual steps. Now that we have our j, we want to calculate a to the mj for each of these j, where m is the number eight, and j is the index that we've listed out on the left. So what was a? Remember from our um, congruence, our general congruence, that a was from a to the x congruent to g mod p. So a in our case is 2. So we have 2 to the 8 times 0. And before we say that this is 1, because 2 to the 0 is 1, I want to note that a to the mj is equal to a to the mj mod p. This is very important since this result will give us the information that we need. So if we write our first step in the same way, we have 2 to 8 times 0 mod 53, which is still equal to 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these, um, rest of these calculations, and I will just come back and put in the completed chart. So you can pause the video and work them out, them out yourself and press play when you're ready. So this is our completed chart and we have calculated all of our a to the mj's for each value of j. From 0 to 7 we have 1, 44, 28, 13, 42, 46, 10, and 16. So now that we've completed this whole set of numbers, we want to go ahead and call this L1. And we will compare L1 to another set of numbers, L2, which we will calculate in our next step. So step 3 is pretty similar to step 2. Um, but instead, we'll be solving for a value g to the a a g times a to the negative i. So our i is, very, is basically the same thing 
as j from step two, but we're using a different variable for this step because we don't want to mix the the variables up. So a, I mean i, is our index again, and we have eight steps. So we'll have again zero through seven, which is eight uh, different steps. And um, on the right side, we'll have what we're solving for, which is g times a to the negative i. Now, similar to um, step two, g t times a to the negative i is equal to g times a to the negative i mod p. So doing our first step, we have our g value, which is 7, our a value, which is 2, and to the negative i, which is just 0. And we mod p it, which will be mod 53. Now, before you say this is equal to 1, you have to remember that we're doing 7 times 2 to the 0 mod 53. And 2 to the 0 mod 53, that is 1. So we essentially are doing 7 times 1, and which is 7. So our answer is 7. So be careful here because we are multiplying by our g value, which is 7. We are multiplying by 7 every time. So once again, I'll be um, uh, going to do the, the calculations for the rest of the chart um, away from here. So you can pause the video and do them yourself. And then we'll come back and you can check your answers with what I've posted. So this is our final chart for step three. And we have solved for all of our a to um, g to the a g times a to the negative i values and we have 7 30 15 34 17 35 44 and 22 so this is our second set of values and remember from earlier i said the values from step two were l1 these will be l2 So here I've put all of our num all of our calculations from step two and step three here. On the left we have L1, and on the right we have L2. L2. I wrote L3. Sorry about that. L2. So our goal is to find um, a set of numbers that match from L1 and L2. So we can just look through our pairs, um, paying attention on the right side of each table and see if we can find um, a number that is the same on both sides. So first glance I'm seeing that we have a 44 on the left side and also we have a 44 on the right side in L2. So we have a 44 in L1 and a 44 in L2. The 44 in L1 goes with the um, 1 index and the 44 in L2 goes with the 6 index. So our point in L1 is 144 and our point in L2 is 6, 44, not 55, 44. So these two points will be important for the next step which I'll go ahead and do right now. So the step we just did was essentially our step four where we found um, a collision in L1 and L2, which is 144 and 644. So step five is now gonna, we're gonna take these two points and we're going to plug them into this equation, mj plus i mod p. And this equals um, 8, which is our m, times 1, which is our j, and i, which is 6, mod p, which was 53 from our original equation. So now we just calculate this. We have 14 mod 53, and... What 14 mod 53 tells us is that this 14 is 
our x value. So what we want to do is check for that. So we try 2 to the 14 mod 53. And lo and behold, the answer is 7, which means everything is right and everything works out. So now that we've checked that 14 works, we can confidently say that x is 14. And that is how you do BSGS to solve for x in a congruence like this. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave any in the comments below. Um, thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and remember to check back for more content. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.